Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. So, in the last episode, I was talking to you about what we should do on this map and how long we should stay here and where we should go next. I was, you know, making the assumption that you'd all want me to go to the um, Fenton Forest map, which is the Felsbrunn Edit by Stevie, and... Something that genuinely surprised me was that most of you said, no, you don't want me to go there. You'd rather wait until a brand new map comes out. You thought that map was really good, but it's still uh, an edit of an existing map. And you'd rather wait until something brand shiny new comes out. That is altogether different. A lot of you said that you want me to keep going with becoming the Chicken King. Uh, you want me to... Um, Pursue this until we've gotten our cows. We want to buy the extra land here. And several of you also said that you want, you know, we're in the States. We've got big fields available. You want me to keep going with this. And you want me to be doing some large-scale farming with proper large-scale machinery on here as well. This all surprised me. I didn't think you'd want me to stay here all that long. Because I know that there's not a huge amount of love for um, the base game maps. There never is. So, yeah, colour me surprised, and I'm I'm not complaining about this. I'm quite happy about this. You know, we, we can stay here, and we can carry on with this map right here. So, we've got some wool over on this side. Now, there is a mod out now that is the same as the chicken pallet that we can put down here. It's 2,000 litres of wool instead of the 1,000 here. Um... As far as I know, it'd be fairly easy to edit these. I was intending to try and do some short videos this week, but, uh, yeah, we, we've uh, I've had a load of snow here uh, over the weekend and a couple days before the weekend, so I've been playing in the snow with my kids instead of doing anything to do with YouTube. And I'm a little bit behind. I'm recording this several days later than I normally would. Still not Monday, which is a step in the right direction, I suppose. But, yes, I, I've, I've had some time out. And I've been doing that. We have launched the Discord server. That is now launched. Jimmy J and Smoodalini are the two lead admins on the Discord server. They are the ones that have set this up. Jimmy J built all of it. He did all of it. He set it all up. Then Smoodalini came along and he's helped him with everything that needed help with you know, sort of setting up the bot and doing all the complicated stuff. Those two have put in a huge amount of work onto it. We've got other people that have come along afterwards and have also contributed massively to it. Uh, but it's all now live and there should be a link in the description down below. It's actually a link to a video. You can go and watch the video and just sort of see the basics of it and, and then there's a link there. Um, we're going to keep it like that because it just make it a little bit easier to sort of keep track. And then if I do... For whatever reason, need to change the link to the server. I haven't got hundreds that I've got to go and change. I just got one on a video that I need to go and change. It's so much easier. So that's why we've done it like that. Uh, but yes, Smoodalini and Jimmy J. Those two are the ones that have really put their heart and souls into this. I some days barely have time to even go and log on and say hello and goodbye and then that's it. Uh, they are there between them pretty much 24-7. It's absolutely incredible the amount of work that those two have put in. And like I say, there are other mods and uh, moderators and admins on there as well who have also put in a huge amount of work. Uh, but Jimmy J and Smoodalini are kind of, they're, they're the leads on this and they are the ones that have really put in the work and the credit needs to go to them. They will be running this server. Right, I'm there in name, but they are the ones that run the Discord, okay? Um, if there are any particular issues that you have, you can by all means come to me, but uh, it's unlikely that I could do anything anytime soon anyway. I get lots of emails, I get lots of stuff, I can't always reply, uh, so yeah, it, it's... They're, they are the ones that are doing this, they are the ones that are running it, and I'm just kind of popping in, giving them some idea of what I might like, and so on, but um, they are the ones that will be operating it, and controlling it, and setting it, and, 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 and so on. Yeah, just, just want you to understand that 
this is something that they they've gone to all the effort of setting this all up so they are the ones that are going to be running it um all i'm doing is smiling and nodding when they tell me to and that's about it and that is absolutely fantastic because i do not have the time for running i've seen the amount of work that those two have put into this and i've had people asking me for a while now when can we have a discord server can we please have a discord server frith we really want a discord server well, that's a really good idea yeah but the amount of time that it takes to set something like that up is quite incredible and having seen Smoodalini and Jimmy J do that, it is quite incredible. You know, it's even more incredible. The amount of time that it has taken them to get everything up and running and going is amazing. It really is. I don't have that kind of time available. I really don't. So it is not something that the actual day-to-day -day running of it is not something I'm going to be very involved with. Uh, I will, like I say, I will be talking about it on here, and then if there are announcements that need to be made, I can go there, I can I can make announcements on there, keep people updated on what's happening with live streams and things like that. It's a really good place to go. Um, so I will be using it for putting up the updates and, and things like that. Uh, but day-to-day -day running of it, yeah, that's that's something that I just, I, I just can't do. And... Having seen the amount of work that those two are putting in in order to run this server and run it well and have everybody sort of catered to and, and there's, there's all sorts of different things going on, um, along with the big team of moderators that they've got on there as well, and every single one of you who is doing this, all of your moderators, all of you, then the admins, it's it's absolutely incredible. It really is. And I absolutely thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is It's just completely blown me away, the amount of work that everybody has put in to making something for all of you. That it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It, it really is. All, all I've done, literally all I've done is sat and made a few videos and everybody has come together and they've put in a whole load of time and effort and, and everybody is, it, it's it's incredible. I am genuinely like gobsmacked by what's happened with this and the amount of people that have just suddenly turned up and said, yeah, I want to be a part of this. I want I want to um, I want to help with this. I want to give up my time. I want to um, give up expertise. I it's yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm I, I'm genuinely blown away by it. It's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So I encourage anybody that hasn't, if you if you know what Discord is, head over there and sign up. There's a like I said, there's a video link in the description down below. Go to that video and then there'll be a link to the actual Discord in that video and you can go along you can sign up and you can say hello to people that are in there uh, same rules apply on there as apply on the channel if it's not uh, family friendly then don't go posting it because it'll just get removed they've, they've got a bot set up that does all sorts of clever things and then you've got all the moderators and everybody else in there as well uh, if you've got any issues then obviously um, take them up with you, you've got a whole moderator team. You, you you know how all this stuff works. Everybody knows how all this stuff works. You know if some if there's issues, there's it it can be dealt with. There's there's ways to get round it all. Um, where am I going to put this one? I think we'll put this one down here. So what I'm kind of wondering what to do at the moment. Oh, actually no, we've got all that wool, haven't we? That's what I was going to do. I was going to start loading up some of that wool because we've got over there the wool at the moment. What's the price of the wool? Yeah, I think the wool was a really good price, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, two thousand dollars. That's a pretty good price. We're going to go with that. Um, the if you've got um any issues then take it up with moderators and admins and so on and it can all be dealt with and yeah it, it will be absolutely fine but uh, so far it's been absolutely amazing seeing everybody pouring in it's been awesome fantastic to see you all there and I, I just it's it's genuinely amazed me that so many people have suddenly just leapt in and it's like all your dreams have come true and I, I Honestly, I, I, I don't get it. I, I honestly, I, I, 
uh, but I've said this before. I, I've, I've said before how I, I sort of I, I don't really get. All I'm doing is just kind of playing a few games and talking while I do so. And, um, and then I get told off by Smoodalini and Jimmy J for putting myself down. Um, not sure that that's sort of putting myself down as much as I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not going to get involved. It, it just sort of yeah. Um, literally, all I'm doing is playing games. That, 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 that's all I do. And this is, like, an amazing response to me just playing some games. And I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm genuinely, like, I was, I was just, I was looking at it and I was thinking, what, what, how? We got so many people here that have just suddenly, like, joined because of me just playing a few games. And I'm just playing games. I'm, I'm not really doing much else. Oh, there we go. I'm also trying to... These pallets are really going to annoy me, aren't they? I'm thinking that I'm going to get one of those um, pallets like we got for the eggs. I'm going to get one for the wool as well. And then I'm going to alter it so that it has like 4,000 litres in the pallet. Because otherwise, we're going to have issues like this. And this thing is going to drive me insane. Well, I definitely don't want to pick them up like that. So we're going to need to put it like that. I swear, really, I ought to go looking for an auto loader. An auto loader would probably do this a bit better because, um, well, just because it, it, it will. We know that it will. An auto loader would do a wonderful job of this. And then I wouldn't have to worry about it. There. Bonk you down there. Pick you up. Oh, look at that. I actually did that one properly. But it still takes a bit of time, doesn't it? So if we had an auto loader, we wouldn't be messing around with this for absolutely ages. And we'd sort of be able to go on a little bit quicker. I'm not fast forwarding time yet until I've got these pallets of wool loaded up. I want to get these loaded and out the way. And then I will try for our next episode to find the wool pallet that does the same as the eggs. And I think I'm going to alter it to at least 4,000 litres. Just because then we're not going to have hundreds of pallets that we've got to deal with and load them all up individually like this. Because this is just going to get really, really irritating. I mean, imagine if you had a thousand sheep. I mean, I quite like, you know, a lot of places I've gone to work have had, that have had sheep. have had, you know, one a thousand, fifteen hundred sheep and something like that. And five or six hundred sheep is absolutely nothing for someone that keeps sheep. So... How many have we got? How many sheep have we got? We got 37 sheep. And you see how much wool we've got from 37 sheep. This is this is just utterly redonkulous. It really is. Um, the number of pallets that we've got. So I, I really... I, I said this before. And I will say it again. I think the wool going to 1,000 litres per pallet was a step backwards. And I think having to unload anything at the wool place was also a step backwards big time I, I absolutely don't agree with that change in the game I think it was uh, I think it was a mistake because it's far less realistic now that we've got to load hundreds of pallets than it was before when you you didn't have quite so many I mean I think the reason they've done it is to kind of balance the work that the money versus um, work uh, versus yeah work versus return that's, that's what I was looking for um, the work versus return. By lowering the amount of litres per pallet, you've actually got to do a bit more work in order to get a decent return. And we all know that the chickens, with you take the 2,400 litre pallet up to a sell point for the chickens, and you make an absolute fortune from it. You really do. You make a vast sum of money from selling that. Um, so, and you, you've sort of cut out some of the work involved there. And technically, you've done the same with the sheep. Anybody who's ever kept sheep know that they are fairly labour-intensive little beasties. And when I say fairly labour-intensive, I mean a sheep's main aim in life is to die. Right? That, that There's no two ways about it. A sheep's single, solitary purpose in life is to find a way to die. And I don't just mean going off and, and uh, you know, jumping off a cliff or something. Oh, no, 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 no. No. A sheep will roll over onto it. It'll go onto its side, right? And then it'll try to 
can put itself up onto its feet by rolling over. And it will do so by rolling over uphill onto its back. And it will then struggle and kick for a few hours on its back, trying to roll uphill instead of downhill the easy way. And then it will give up. And it will lie there on its back without really struggling at all, without doing anything. And it will just stay there until it dies. Right? It will literally just stay there until it dies. I've seen sheep doing this. Right? I have seen them doing this. If you go and walk in the field and you go anywhere near the darn thing, he will just jump up and run away. They, 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 they always will. She will just leap up and run away. A sheep will go and get itself caught in a bramble bush. And when I say caught in a bramble bush, I don't mean stuck completely in the middle of a bramble bush. Oh, no. I mean a couple of brambles entangled in its wool. That's it. Just, just a couple. Not, not anything too bad. Not anything too serious. Just a couple brambles entangled in the sheep's wool. You'd think that it'd be able to just pull itself free. Nope. It'll sit there and it will unquestioningly die. It'll stay there without moving, without pulling, without struggling until it no longer breathes. And it, it'll quite happily do that for some strange reason. If you go near it in order to try to free the thing, um, you know, it, it'll wait until it's really, really cold and wet before it does this in the first place. And then you've got to go and walk for absolutely ages to get near it. And then it will wait for it. We'll wait for it. We'll wait till you get closer. And you think, you know, this sheep might actually be stuck. I may have found the first sheep in the history of keeping sheep that is actually gotten stuck and it'll wait until you just about close enough to touch it and then it'll give a quick jump and a wriggle and it'll run off having freed itself with zero effort but if you hadn't approached that sheep nope it will stay there until it dies it'll it will just stay there until it dies no questions it's it's, it's not it's not going to do anything at all it will just stay there this this just gives you an inkling of what sheep are like. And that's just, you know, trying to keep them alive. You've then got things like fly strike, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, you, what you've got to do is, in the summer, every four to six weeks, you've got to get all the sheep in and you've got to shear all the wool away from around their tail because the, the nice green grass that looks so wonderful also makes them somewhat liquid in the poop department instead of nice solid round marbles they go somewhat gooey and liquidy um it's not the nicest but it does it tends to stick to their wool and it sticks to their wool big time you get a lot of this stuff stuck to their wool and right i'm just gonna jump out of there a second you get a lot of this all stuck to their wool and there we go we strap that lot down climb out i've got two more pallets here i can take yet you get all of this, uh, it sticks to their wool. Then the uh, flies will come along and they will lay maggots. Uh, they will lay eggs. They don't lay maggots, they lay eggs. Uh, they lay eggs into the all, all this juicy poop that is on the fur. Uh, on, on the fur? Sheep don't have fur, Frith. Come on, get with the times. Um, on the wool around their tails. And then those eggs hatch into the tiny maggots and those maggots start to eat. And they actually eat into the poor sheep and it dies. Right, that will kill it. Uh, fly strike is actually quite a serious issue for people that keep sheep. Um, that is what fly strike is. It is just maggots. It's maggots hatching out around the poopy tails. You know, we're probably not really best suited to getting these pallets up that high on the trailer. Um... I will just get another pallet, and I will just move it there. Um, but yeah, fly strike is quite an issue. It, it it is quite a serious issue. So you've got to shear the sheep around their tails every four to six weeks through the summer, just to make sure they don't have anything on them like that. You've got to shear the whole sheep at the beginning of the summer as well. That's another thing you do. 
uh, and then sheep require various vitamins and minerals to keep them healthy and so you've got to drench them and and put other stuff on them and and so on and so forth they are quite labor intensive little beasties and then of course you've got lambing time and they become even more labor intensive during lambing time you basically have a month during lambing time a month to six weeks where you don't sleep at all you you, you nap for an hour maybe two hours in a chair uh, when you get a chance at various points during the day and then you oops i didn't want to do that i want to do this and then put that on like that um after you've had a, a brief nap um you get up and you carry on again by the end of your six weeks you are literally just a walking zombie trust me on this i've done it and whilst it can be fun it's also absolutely and utterly exhausting at the end of lambing you are genuinely absolutely exhausted um but it, it does get better towards the end of it. Towards the end of it, you do actually start to get some sleep, like real sleep. And it's, it's, it's quite amazing. It, it, you, remembering what sleep is like is, is just, a, it, it's wonderful. It, it really is. Um, so that is kind of the experience with sheep. And they are very labor intensive. Now, this is why a lot of people don't actually like sheep. I know quite a number of farmers that would never get sheep because of just how labor intensive they are compared to cows now beef cattle they're less labor intensive there is a lot of work don't get me wrong you know, any farming is it's labor intensive really um but sheep do tend to be a little bit more labor intensive than a lot of creatures um and i know some farmers who love sheep they think that they're absolutely amazing and they get on very well with uh, sheep farming but um others just really really don't like them and they get on a lot better with doing beef farming the thing with beef farming though is when you've got to go and do something to a sheep right you catch all the sheep and you can do what you need to it with beef you stand a much higher chance of getting a good solid kick by uh, a beef animal and that hurts that hurts a lot uh beef animals do actually stand a you know there is the very real risk that you can sustain broken bones with beef animals. They can crush you without too much thought. Whereas sheep, you're not very likely to sustain broken bones or be crushed by sheep. So there's pros and cons. There really is. Um, but, I mean, as long as you do it sensibly, it doesn't really matter which one you're using. If, if you're sensible, you, you're not going to get badly hurt whichever one you're doing. Um, but, yeah, there, there's definitely pros and cons to both of these types of animals i'm going to go there a second and i'm going to take those straps off and then we're going to come oh oh selling all of it and then those two go the right way up Twenty thousand. there this trailer must be just low enough i think maybe the other trailer we had wasn't quite low enough to do it so what do we end up with we good twenty four thousand because we were at minus 500 weren't we so $24,000 there for the unload. Okay, that's good. That's good. I take it all back about um, not auto-unloading. It does auto-unload, and it's absolutely wonderful. I'm very, I'm very, very pleased about that bit. I still think we ought to increase the amount of wool that we can have per pallet. So we'll, we will test these uh, probably in our next episode. Anyway, we've done that enough now, so I can start fast-forwarding time a bit more. I'm not going to worry too much about going and getting um, a load of other wool and stuff like that. But what I did say that I wanted to do today was I wanted to tidy up the yard. And we do need to do this. Let's just have a look at our chickens. We've got 1,200 in there. 936 litres there. The sheep, they're absolutely fine. Horses over here. We could do with a little bit of hay. We've got Patrick, Dante, Jamie, Michael, and Wind Walker. This one should actually be Michael B. Oh, want a space there. Michael B. That one should be Michael B. Uh, I'm not sure if I've updated the name on the... Um, website yet but anyway that is that is that should be michael b right there 
And we've got some weeds growing on that field over there. Does that mean we have... We do have weeds growing on that field up there as well. So let me slow down time again. Because I want to catch the weeds at this stage. Now, we do have our spray that we can use if we want to. There we go. We've got weeds right the way across it. So we can, we can go and just use the sprayer again if we want to. I don't know if I've got spray here, though. I know we got fertilizer. Oh, yes, we do. We got liquid spray down there. In which case, we will just use the sprayer rather than anything else. So I, I need to find somewhere for this trailer. We might put this one over near um, Cerberus's house. Cerberus, mind out, old chap. Mind yourself. I'm, I'm running over his ball. I'm going to knock his house down completely at this rate. I'm going to bring that one over there. Like that. And we'll drop that one there. It is a bit of a mess here in this yard. I need to tidy this yard up. And I'm, I'm slowly getting it into some semblance of order. Although we still got bales kicking around. And I said I was going to do something about that. Uh, what I was thinking of doing was going to getting a weeder. And using a weeder. But I don't think I actually want to do that. I think I'm just going to do things as we've got them right now. Uh, let me unhitch that one there. Turn those beacons off. We get the sprayer. We've got a load of herbicide right there so that we can use that. And we will get both these fields sprayed off. We've got $24,000 at the moment, which means that we are in a position where we can buy some more horses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one. Uh, I do want a front weight. You know, we got the weight of this on the back. That is quite a substantial weight, so we're going to want something to counterbalance that. Otherwise, we're not going to have full control over our steering. And then the problem with that is that we end up um, if you haven't got full control over your steering, you end up sort of sliding on the field. And that's going to do a lot more damage to the young plants than having a bit of extra weight on the front. So we'll bring this one over here. This is the bit that I love about this. is the dials on the side. They fill up. As, as, they, as they fill up on there. There we go. The dials actually go all the way up. There's two moving dials on those. I think that's awesome. I really do. It's it's only it's it's a very small thing, but I do. I genuinely think that's awesome. Now I have said that I'll be doing some mowing up here, and I still haven't gotten to the mowing. I haven't forgotten about the mowing, but at the same time, I'm not sort of giving it very much priority. Mostly, I'm worrying about the uh, getting this crop done, and we also want to worry about getting the horses done today as well, if I can. I'm in a position where I could go and buy some more horses. We've got 20,000 at the moment, and if we can keep the pen of horses full, or at least relatively full, I figure that's probably a good thing. There was another thing I wanted to do, as well as doing the mowing, I also wanted to make that grass field bigger. I wanted to plough it up to, up to the limit so that we've got that one sort of using up all the available space. Um, I wanted to... What else did I want to do? I've got lots of things I want to do. We've got the chickens that we're still expanding and we're still working on. Um, so I want to get the I want to get the ploughing done. I want to get some more horses because the horses are going to be a decent regular supply of income, which is absolutely fantastic. But having them as a regular income, we've still got to maintain them. We've still got to uh, feed them with oats. We've still got to put straw. We've still got to do the hay and everything else. And we want to keep them running through there as well. So let me just finish off this little field here. I'll go and do a bit round. Actually, I wonder if I can just do that. If I just press H on there. Is that going to go and do that? Go down through there. And actually, I think it is. And then it's going to go around. Right, okay, that's good. That's fine. We'll let that one go. Uh, I'm going to come to you right there. So we'll run down this way. we we'll go to our horses. We can buy four more. How many can we get in this pen? We've got the small horse pen, haven't we? So I want to go there and there and animal pens and chickens. We've got that horse paddock right there. We can have eight horses. Right, because I sold... 
the expensive horse we had in here. So we've only got four at the moment. So if I go and I press R in there. Uh, no, we've actually got five. We've got Patrick, Dante, Jamie, Michael, B, and Windwalker. So I'm going to buy three more. Uh, what colors am I going to go? I'm going to go for that one. There. And seal brown and done. Confirm. And that's that's all I can put in, I think. I will tr I'll try and put in another one. The pen capacity has already been reached. Right. As we have now reached the pen capacity, we need to go over to there. When we scroll down through here, we got Verona, Jazz, and Scout. They need to be renamed a minute. We have got Tonza, Zorta777, and Deuce MS are now part of our holdings. And then we've also got these up here. So those are going to carry on doing what they're doing. And... We've now got eight horses in here. I might get some more horses as well, I think. I may seriously consider getting some more horses. Because um, that way I can have more of you named on the map as well. Which I think would be quite good. If you would like to get into the Great Book of Names. That is where I'm getting those names from. Is the Great Book of Names. You are all... Anybody that is subscribed to the channel is officially a Frith Guardian. Uh, but if you want to become a named Frith Guardian... You need to go above and beyond. Uh, become an active member of the community on here on in, in the comments. Be, be regular and active in the comments. Um, or you can go over on to uh, the, the, the uh, Discord server that I happened to mention earlier. I may have mentioned the Discord server earlier. I'm, I may have. Uh, the, the, uh, does it ring a bell? Is this Discord server? I think th is the, these um, people called Jimmy J and Smoodalini have... Um, done. It's like massive amount of work on a thing called Discord, and it, it's quite cool. Uh, so yeah, you go and check that one out. There's a link in the description. Um, but becoming an active member in the Discord server and, and regularly contributing, and, and and I don't mean just spamming messages and upsetting everybody. I mean being like a a, a, a valued member of the community, not a, not a spammy member of the community. There's a difference. There, there is a subtle difference. Um, like me, where I put out hundreds and hundreds of videos all the time, continuously, just a wall of constant Frithgar, um, that may be considered spammy by many, 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 many people. Uh, don't be like Frithgar. Okay? I'm one of those memes that you see on Facebook. Uh, this is Bill. This is Frithgar. Frithgar puts out hundreds of videos every day. Don't be like Frithgar. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... Become a member of the Discord community and be active on there. You could earn your way into the Great Book of Names on there as well. And once you're in the Great Book of Names, you are there to stay. Of course, the other way to earn your way into the Great Book of Names is to make a donation. Any donation at all, however big or small. And people have asked me about this before. Now that I'm doing live streams, people have been asking me how much have they got to donate in the live stream in order to be able to earn a place in the great book of names uh anything at all you make a donation your name goes in the book it's as simple as that uh you can go and support me on patreon if you'd rather you make a donation on patreon it doesn't go out until the end of the month so now at the beginning of the month i'm busy keeping an eye on anybody new and once the payment is confirmed um i make a note and I add you to the book. There is a list over on my website of everybody who is in the Great Book of Names. I try to keep the list updated. It's not... I, I did update it a couple of days ago, but there are already a couple of extra people who have gone into the list. Um, so the list is not always able to be updated um, promptly, but I do try to at least update it every couple of weeks or so, if I can. Because I realise it's quite important to a lot of you that I do stay on top of this. So if you, you'll be able to see your name turn up on the website and I'm considering somewhere else where I could put names as well. But I use you to name things in the games that I play. When I was playing City Skylines I had a district laid out on our City Skylines map after everybody that was in the book. Uh, it's, it, it does become more difficult because I currently have 104 people named in the book and that list grows every single week. It's quite amazing just how much this list grows and how frequently this list grows. It, it, it is genuinely amazing to me how quickly it is growing. Um, so keeping people in the games 
it might become more difficult. I may have to sort of reassess how I go about actually getting the names. At the moment, I just kind of work through the list and um, take the next name down on the list and go for that. But eventually, I'm going to get to the point where new people being added in aren't going to be turning up in a series for a very, very long time. So I might start working backwards on some of them or go back to what I was doing, which is using a random number generator in order to select which names should appear. Um, now that I've got so many names, a random number may be a little bit better. I'm not quite sure. I don't know, but I will make sure there are ways to get everybody into the various different series. If I'm if I'm putting a lot of names in, I'll make sure that lots of names go in. Um, and, and I will find ways to make sure that it's reasonably fair. So that everybody does get a chance. But that's how you can get into the Book of Names. And I know that a lot of you really like this idea and you really want to appear. So we're going to be... I'm thinking I will probably expand the horses. I'm thinking that another horse pen would be a good idea. We could have 16 people in here then. And I can keep rolling through you as we have horses that are sold on. We've got the groom mod. So the groom is the one that's exercising all of said horses and, and taking them out. Um, so we don't actually have to worry about that. Right, what I think I'll do here is I'll get that dolly there, which we're not using at the moment. And I'm going to put that one away somewhere. I might be able to put it under here. It's very difficult reversing with a short wheelbase because it reacts so fast. So it's always more difficult reversing a short wheelbase than a long wheelbase. Um, but it can be done. Ooh, okay. Just, just, just ignore the fact that I um, sideswiped our mower there. That's not really the done thing. We shouldn't be doing things like that. Sideswiping mowers is never a good idea. Uh, come back here and I'll grab you a minute. This one I'm going to put next to that fertilizer spinner. And then we'll put the sprayer in there as well. Okay, you know what? Rather than shunting lots and lots, I'm going to say that I intended to put the trailer over this side. Does anybody actually believe that? Does anybody at all believe a word I've just said? Probably not. And then we'll come over this way. We do now actually have money, which means that we can fill up our water bowser. We had trouble with this some time ago uh, where we couldn't fill it up because we didn't have any money. Oop, wrong button. Ah. Yes! Ha-ha! <laughs> it works. We can fill it up now that we have cash. Cash is the thing. Money makes the world go round, apparently. Now, I've heard it said many times that money cannot buy happiness. And I agree, money can't buy happiness. However, money can buy a much higher quality of misery. It really can. And also, money can buy bacon, which, as far as I'm concerned, is about as close to money buying happiness as you're ever going to get. So, just because people have sagely told you that money can't buy happiness... They're probably right, but uh, just, just remind them gently that money does buy bacon. And, well, we all, we all know what bacon is like. And, um, yeah, so so if, if you remember, I don't know if anybody remembers, back in FS17, we had a whole thing going on with Danish bacon, didn't we? There was a whole thing going on with Danish bacon. So apparently money can also buy Danish bacon, if that's what you want. You can go and buy some Danish bacon. You can also, as far as I'm aware, you can also go and buy another form of bacon, and that is uh, that that is Dutch bacon. Altogether different. Dutch bacon is altogether different from Danish bacon, and some would argue that the Dutch bacon is a better form of happiness than the Danish bacon, although others would argue to the contrary. Um, I'm not actually trying to start a war between Holland and Denmark just now. So, uh, we're, we're, no wars between Holland and Denmark, please. It's just a, a reference to some silly little mistake that somebody got wrong quite some time ago. I, I, I really don't know why we had to bring this up. I, I, I really don't. Uh, so, let, let's just move on from this, shall we? We clean our tractor down quite nicely. Here we go. There we go. Uh, okay. Sewer, 1,000 kilo front weight. You're very grubby. Why aren't you coming clean? 
Come clean, I tell you. Is it? Because it's warm. No, no, it's now, it is cleaning. I noticed this in FS17. Sometimes the front weights take longer to clean than at any other part of the vehicles. Now, I realize that if you've got like a lorry and you've been driving up the road, and uh, you've got this big flat front of the lorry, um, and you spent all day driving down the dual carriageway or the motorway or highway, whatever it is that you call it, the autobahn, um, the, you know, the, the front of the lorry is likely to be covered in a load of dried insects. So in theory, it should be a little bit more difficult to clean than a lot of the rest of the vehicle. However, we don't really go that fast, do we? Chugging up and down the field, it doesn't really make a lot of sense that that just flat piece of metal right there would be more difficult to clean than the whole of the rest of the tractor. It 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 doesn't compute. It it that that's one little bit that never really makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, it it happens. There's not a lot that we can do about it, but it still doesn't fully compute. We'll drop that one in there, and you know things are actually looking a lot tidier around here. I know I've got the uh, the, the horses thing out the front there for the straw and everything. I'm going to put that one in there like that. And I'm going to go over to you. I'm going to take this one down and we're going to just drop a bit of water in for those horses. I'm going to have a look as well. Um, people said... I was talking about... You remember I was talking about the, um, the the fact that chickens have got to have grit. Um, several people pointed out, well, yeah, you know, birds have got no teeth. They need to be able to grind up their food. And I did forget to point out that obvious bit where they don't have teeth. So they do need to be able to grind up their food and that that's kind of how it works um but yeah uh what was it that people said there was i had a couple suggestions about different things i could do for simulating putting some grit into the chickens and some of them i thought were pretty good actually can't remember now i think somebody said that i should actually like paint the patch of gravel in the chicken pen and that could do it. We could use the landscaping thing. So it would cost a little bit of money, which would, you know, cost a little bit for the gravel as well. So we could do that. Um, but water. It, it does annoy me that we don't put water in for the chickens. That's something I think is wrong with it. I definitely think that is wrong. We do need to put water in for the sheep. And they could do with a little bit. And then the horses over here, they actually need everything. They need the whole shebang, they do. So we'll run over here and we'll drop in a little bit of water for them first. And then if we've got some water left, we'll run that up for the sheep. Uh, but we're, we're kind of running out of time for today's episode. I've d I have done some tidying. I said I was going to do some tidying and get things looking nicer in here. And I have done some. So I feel that I am making some progress. I've actually done something I said I was going to do. We ought to be fast-forwarding time again. The whole idea at the moment for this series is you all want me to progress along quite rapidly, I think. Um, get the extra, get more chickens, get the sheep, uh, not the sheep, get the cows going on this map as well. You want me to be producing those and doing stuff with them, uh, buying more land. And a surprising number of you, surprising to me anyway have said that you want me to buy bigger stuff. Either move on to a new map where there's a whole load of bigger stuff available that we could go and get. Um, and, like, focus on really large-scale farming. Or upgrade here and move towards very large-scale farming here as well. So we could have a, a very large-scale arable enterprise on here as well as the kind of the slightly smaller scale that we've got to do for the animals on here. Um, but I'm thinking we've got these 2,500 litre pallets for the eggs. I just seen on uh, Twitter, I think it was, somebody sharing a modified version of it that is 8,000 litres. And I thought that actually might not be a bad idea. I know it could seem a little bit unrealistic, but at the same time... It seems like a really good idea. If we were to go like 8,000 litres there and do the same with the sheep, there'd be a lot less pallets that we'd have to worry about. Either that or I want to get an auto loader for pallets. Anyway, I have run out of time for today's episode, so I will continue this on next time. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. 
Please don't forget to go and check out the Discord server if you haven't already. Say hi to Jimmy J and Smoodalini and the rest of the moderator and admin team there who are doing an absolutely wonderful job. We have got another admin on there, Travis Dudley. He's, um... I'm really sorry, Travis. I can't remember what your name, what your admin name is on the Discord server at the moment. Um, he has also been putting in a lot of time on it. So he is another admin on there. Um, as far as everybody on the Discord is concerned, the admin and moderator teams, are they are the gods of my Discord server. Uh, I say mine. It's, really, it is. It, it's Smudos and Jimmy J's. Uh, credit where it is due. Right? I feel bad. I really do. I feel bad for saying my disc is not my Discord server at all. I've hardly done anything at all to it. Um, I, I've just kind of been there and, and done the little bits that I've been told to do. And that's about it. That's, that's my input to it. They're the ones that have done the work. It's their Discord server, not mine. I, I really do. I can't emphasize this enough that they have done such an awesome job with it. Uh, but anyway... Um, don't forget to go and check out the Discord server if you haven't already. It is absolutely awesome. Um, and, of course, uh, there's all the, the, the various other links and stuff to mods. If I've forgotten anything in the description, then please let me know in the comments. Um, but that's all I've got time for. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.